Hello, I'm Greg Martin, and we own AMDJService.com here in Pocosin. And I'm here at the Pocosin Museum. We're paying tribute to all the men and women who served in Southeast Asia and Vietnam. And what we're doing is we're kind of creating our own version of Armed Forces Radio in what it might have sounded like back in the 1960s and early 70s. And you know, we selected tunes from the late 50s all the way through the 60s through the mid 70s and we've been doing this all weekend and had a blast uh, great people lots of people out here classic cars the list goes on and on and uh, I'll tell you what uh, if you missed it this year make sure you come and see it next year it's fabulous military police tent here at the Pocosa Museum for the Vietnam weekend. So uh, we're portraying military policemen from the United States Army and also from the Army of the Republic of Vietnam or Arvin Forces. Um, QC stands for Quan Ken, which is uh, just uh, basically military police in Vietnamese. Uh, we also have here a representative of the United States Army military police as well. And so what we'd be doing of course is military and um, civil law enforcement. Um, and we'd actually be working in tandem a lot uh, during during the uh, conflict, uh, usually with domestic, uh, you know, uh, instances where you need to have that uh, representative from uh, South Vietnam, along wor working with, um, you know, the foreign United States Army, makes uh, working together a lot easier for these matters. So, yeah, so I'm representing the uh, MPs of the 18th Brigade. So the 18th Brigade was uh, responsible for actually certain sections of Vietnam and actual combat operations. So. Uh, they weren't just policemen, they were actually soldiers as well. Um, and so we worked with these guys so that we could maintain order across the country uh, because the soldiers themselves are interacting with the civilian population. And so this also helps us, you know, have once of a translator with us as well. So um, it's a two way street. Um, and uh, like Joe was saying, the, the military police of the uh, Republic of Vietnam, they had a really good force actually. They're all well educated fellows. Uh, they uh, they have the lowest desertion rate of the of the, of the Vietnamese army, and uh, so uh, it was a, it was a, it was a good relationship they had. So and a lot of these guys actually emigrated after the war to the United States. What we have here is air ground operations, which uh, is recounting the uh, stories of the radio telephone operator, or RTO, uh, out in the field with the troops, coordinating between the Huey helicopters and uh, getting, you know, uh, the wounded medevaced out and uh, communicating with uh, their gunships. Also, the uh, story of the Air Force liaisons on the ground who were actually uh, helping troops, troops out with close air support. So some of the items uh, that were key were was the uh, uh, radios. Uh, so you had the PRC-10, which was early on in the war, and you had the PRC-25, which came later, uh, followed by the uh, 77, which looked very similar to the 25. One of the uh, biggest differences between them is with the 25, you have a very small battery uh, as compared to the 10, which had a very large battery. Uh, with that, uh, the RTO is carrying the entire inf infantryman's kit along with the radio and battery and an extra battery just in case. Uh, typically they would have uh, either the long or short. Uh, with the short antenna they would get about a mile uh, communication. With the long antenna they would get about three miles of communication. But under a thick jungle, jungle canopy uh, they would 
probably didn't get anywhere near that. Uh, and that's where you hear stories of men attaching slinkies uh, to the radio and throwing them into the trees for uh, better range. All right, so my name's Jason. I'm portraying a Marine in 1968 during the Tet Offensive that took place in January 1968. We left Phu Bai. We assaulted uh, the Citadel City of Hue uh, to relieve it of Vietnamese control. I'm carrying an M16 with additional magazines in my bandolier as well as my ammunition pouches. I'm wearing my standard 107 jungle fatigues, my standard issue jungle boots, and my regular M1 helmet with a Mitchell pattern helmet cover. I also have uh, my weapons oil, my cigarettes, my sunglasses attached to my helmet. My name is Thomas Sasso. I'm portraying a Viet Cong during the Vietnam War and also the first Indochina War. We've been fighting the French for about 20 years, and now the Americans are coming for the next 10 years. Uh, the gear that I'm wearing is mostly black uh, clothing. I try and help myself hide in the shadows. I have the sandals of uh, every Vietnamese. I'm wearing a grass hat with a little bit of cam camouflage and bamboo in it. I'm carrying an AK-47. It's a Soviet weapon. The Soviets are supplying us. I have extra magazines on my side. Well, welcome to River Squadron 53, U.S. Navy in Vietnam. Today we're portraying the riverine sailors that were um, manning the uh, patrol boats in the rivers of Vietnam during the war. Because uh, protecting the rivers, interdicting smugglers, and uh, preventing the movement of enemy troops was very important. We also did roles in um, supporting the SEAL teams, uh, Army Alert Ranger teams, and delivering them and picking and extracting them on missions. And uh, because of the delta of the southern part of Vietnam is mostly rivers, um, there's a lot more mobility using the rivers and the, the high-speed patrol boats, shallow draft riverine craft were heavily armed. We were very successful in encountering the enemy small craft. 